What's up, you titty turtles? Welcome to the Dunky Crunk Show. Today, we are going over crazy secrets that we found on Reddit. I found, I should say, on Reddit. He has not heard these yet. And we're gonna do some, some secrets, and some of these are pretty wacky, and some of them are pretty funny, and some of them are actually quite dark. 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 But before that, here's the ending of Us. All right, so let's get right into it. Yeah! To it, do it. First <laughs> one says, two and a half years ago, I was in dire financial straits, so I sold my home to keep my struggling business afloat. I neglected to tell the owners that they have an 800 square foot bunker on the property that I built about seven years ago. The bunker that I've called home since I sold it. The entrance to it is well hidden, but I still come and go very early or very late in the day. I'm a single man who keeps to himself, and I'm now in a situation where I could move somewhere else, but I love this hidden paradise so much. So he literally lives on a property that he sold that's hilarious. in a bunker that they do not have. A, that's like that's some. The, that's the most alpha thing I've ever seen. Dude, that's some like horror movie shit, right? But there, he's like, man. I'm gonna keep to myself. Like, I don't. I just want Cheetos. Right. right. Like, I don't have money. Time. I just need an 800 square foot bunker. Dude, that's gotta be like the. That's yeah. The plot to the horror movie is that the property's kids like just yeah. stumble up on this bunker right. and like one of the kids falls and like hurts themselves and the well and then he's he's like got to now deal with this yeah. like oh shit do i kill the kids and just keep my secret <laughs> or do i fess up and run right. i mean imagine if someone was just living on our property dude, that's outside. what that green spot is so i'm saying it just opens up it just oh, like just goes down dude yeah. they'd have to well i'm up at all hours so they have a, they say, must be picking their times very well between me uh hodai and you yeah, yeah we got we, we got every shift. hour yeah. covered <laughs> Of awakeness. All right. Exactly. Uh, this is, uh, it was a long one, but the TLDR says, I'm a guy and I let people believe I was raised in care because I was abused when in fact I had a great childhood except that my mother tried to raise me as a girl. So he, he basically tricked everybody to believe he was abused as a kid, but he had a great childhood. The only thing that happened was his mom wanted to raise him as a girl. I mean, that could be considered yeah. as abuse. It it's just of how, weird how hard she was about it. Like It's weird to lie about that. Like, that's such an attention thing. Uh, like, you have a great childhood, but it's like, I was abused. Or maybe it's like a fitting in thing. Like, maybe all of his friends are like, had shitty lives. So he's like, yeah, I feel you guys. Like, yeah. back in the old uh, brick house, uh, <laughs> the, the sweatshop. I, right? I, I would find it more strange that his mom tried to raise him as a yeah, girl. Yeah, that seems like abuse to Like, me, and to, that's like, the honest of he's it. He's like, yeah, all, all that happened was little, she put a little makeup on me and tried to make me fuck dudes but like, <laughs> yeah. what's wrong with that i mean doesn't everybody do it right. he's like that's almost more sad as like he was mentally abused and he's like there was nothing wrong with me all right right. right nothing at all all right next one says i speak two languages so every time i received a new essay i would browse the topic in my own language and translate the text word by word to english then submit it and no one ever caught me for plagiarism that's kind wait. of like smart. Wait, hold on, say that. So he would copy an essay in right. a different language uh -huh. and then translate it into English and oh, submit it. Okay. And because it was copied from a different language, right. it would never be found in English. Huh. So he just basically copied that's, that foreign language like... essays to pass his his <laughs> well, classes. Well, doesn't he have to go through it to make it make sense again, though? Because I mean, it's yeah, it's gonna be all backwards. Yeah, and shit. sure. But so you just he's add... gonna learn the like... essay by the end of it because he's gonna have to go through <laughs> right. re He just everything. has to like repunctuate, maybe that's change funny. a couple words, but then yeah, that's yeah, it. That's, I mean, yeah, we might have just I mean, given our audience uh -oh. an idea to like you pass yeah. their class. Yikes, that's plagiarism. <laughs> all right, uh, next one says I cut off all contact with everyone that I know and I moved to Kenya. Mm -hmm. I tell people a fake name and a fake background and have made it appear to my family that I died on a boat trip in the Pacific. I am not joking that I am dead in the United States. Yo, it's a solid April Fool's joke, dude. No, like that's that this. Dude, I, oh my god. Yeah, that's a. Just for the fun of it, or? I don't know. Like, just a lot of, like, bad problems? I don't know. Man, there's it just it, no it never said. It was just like, yeah, I moved to Kenya, and my, everyone in my family thinks I'm dead. What a dick. Dude, like, like, that is such a dick move to do. Oh, fuck. Put your whole entire, <laughs> I guess unless your family were just complete, like, assholes. Right, but yeah. put your entire family through that pain, 
and then just be like, no, I'm, I'm, or maybe it's I'm for the greatest good. prank ever, like in 10 years. He comes back in 10 back, years, what's like, up, bitches? right? <laughs> I'm Jesus. What the fuck? How's it going? All right, uh, it's funny because I collected these so long ago, I kind of forgot. <laughs> so it's kind of like surprising me as well. Mm -hmm. This one says, I run a cake business and I charge people hundreds for wedding cakes. Every last one is made using Pillsbury cake mix that I buy for a dollar a box at Walmart. I suck at baking. Every time I've ever tried to make a cake from scratch, it sucked, but baking is like my deal. My friends all call me the cake girl. It's like my whole what? life is a lie. People compliment my cakes all the time, telling me how delicious they are, telling me it's so much better than box cake mix, telling me they could never bake a cake so delicious. Well, guess what? For a dollar, they too can make a cake just as delicious. Bro. Yeah. What? You charge yeah. hundreds of dollars? Right. Even my best friends think I slave over the oven mixing the cakes. I've been doing this for years. Okay, real quick though. I have never seen a boxed cake when it's finished the, ever that I was like, I would pay hundreds for that. Yeah, like, I don't know. How are you may able to trick Maybe these people Maybe buys that? like three or four of them for like bigger <laughs> cakes. on top of each other. Yeah, I don't know. She doesn't know anything about baking though. So she's like, she would have to figure out how to do that like right. stand thing where you yeah. shave them and then ice them. Yeah. Unless she's literally just like. Uh, hey everybody, editor's note here. Just wanted to say uh, upon reading the screenshot, it actually says that she makes the fondant and stuff from scratch. So she decorates the cakes and makes them look all crazy and extravagant. So that wasn't answered in the video, but uh, just wanted to throw that in there so it makes more sense. Unless the funniest thing ever would be that everybody knows it and no <laughs> one has told her. She, <laughs> she thinks she's living this elaborate yeah. life. She's all stressed out, but they're just pissed that they like, yeah. she's been selling they're, they're, They feel so bad for her. <laughs> it's like the Truman Show, but it's just one lady in her cake shop. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's crazy. That would be the best. I'm pretty reveal sure ever. that's fraud. I don't know. I don't oh know the legality God. of that. Yeah, I want our answer to be the right. All right. <laughs> uh, next one is I once helped out my female friend's family by taking care of their cat for a week. Every day for a week, I would go over there and snoop around their house. I found my friend's diary and read the whole thing. I used this information to get her to like me, and she is currently my wife. If that ain't some sleeper cell shit, dude. <laughs> oh like, my god. I read her diary, found out what she liked, became that person, and now we're married. I violated her trust so I could gain her trust. Dude, like, <laughs> like if, okay, so if you ever found that out about, you know. Oh my god. How, how would you react to that? Would you be like, I'd be like pissed? Hey, yo, look, pretend you didn't say that, and it's like a good prank. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's just too much to unpack. That's, that's like, a lot. Just morally, I feel like I would have to be like, well, I can't be with you. That's a huge yeah. like invasion of just like, that's the type of person right. you are. But then also it's like, you fucking dog. Yeah. Like, I think it would be the lie of it. Like mm -hmm. if, if they, re if I ever had a diary and they read it, it'd mm -hmm. be like, okay, you read my diary. I can get over that. But then to never bring it up right. and then use that to then it's marry strategically me like, yeah, it's, oh my is God. so like, Smart but fucked at the same time. <laughs> this man, yeah, it. this man's an evil genius. <laughs> yeah, for real. I thought this was gonna turn into like I didn't put my dick on my cat. I didn't <laughs> come on my cat. I, I thought swear. it was gonna be that, but then it was like, oh my, oh my god, yeah, what's dude, going on? Fucking wild. All right, next one. I don't want to be with my girlfriend anymore, but she might have cancer, and I feel like I need to stay in the relationship. Yo, <laughs> that's called codependency. You break up with her. Holy shit. I mean, yeah, that's a that's a tough situation to be in. Like, I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, that's rough. I don't. It depends. Do you not want to be with your girlfriend because of circumstances prior, or do you not want to be with her because she? Got I think cancer? it's circumstances prior, but then she got cancer. Oh uh, yeah, then that just comes down to like people are gonna think you're a dick if you do well, it. But it says she might have damned. cancer. She, she oh, might yeah. not. She might. So damned if you do, damned if you don't. At this point, homie, like you stay with her, you're gonna be unhappy, and you're just gonna watch somebody slowly die. You break up with her and spare her those feelings, and or you could be, you know be a make a wish and pretend to love her until she dies. But what if she doesn't have it? She beats it, and then you just committed to a lie, right. and now you got to marry this chick. That, out of that's one guilt. of those things you cannot find in a yeah. self help book. That's a, yeah. That's, that's literally like I don't know. That's what a door to you do. just have to go through. Yeah. On. Uh, I, I would stay I would break up with her I think if that was the case if I yeah. knew I didn't love that person anymore and they got cancer and I still was like yeah I still don't love you yeah. I would for sure be like yo it's bad timing and all but <laughs> like 
This is gonna be way harder in the long run if I try to stick through this. I honestly don't know what I would do. But I'm also a that's, guy to work on things, so. Yeah, oh, no. that's really rough. That's really rough. Yeah, that's a bad spot to be in. <laughs> Next, everyone thinks I have a good job and roommates, but I've been homeless and a prostitute for over <laughs> a year. Stealth level 100. <laughs> How? How do you fucking... Hey, can we come over to your- No! Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, dude, I mean, honestly, she could just be like, Oh, I'll come to your place, I'll come to your place, whatever. Or, that, uh, it could be a dude, I don't know, there's dude prostitutes that- I, I don't know. I don't know how you right. get away with that for a year, well, but- Yeah, then that- Because if you don't have, like, what does she do for, like, home address? For, like, a driver's license or something to, to lie and be like- Maybe she's just like, oh, I don't have a car, I take the bus. You know, yeah, that's true. I mean, you can you can literally lie your way around almost anything. Or somebody be like, "Hey, do you have an identification card? <laughs> yeah, an right. ID? Seriously, man, that's a yeah, that's impressive more yeah, than anything. Seriously, like, I don't even know if you should be ashamed. <laughs> it's just like all right, it. IT guy here. It's amazing what people will do on their computers and say in their emails, despite having to sign a waiver that all computer activity at work is monitored and recorded. I have half the company's banking, social media, and personal email account info and passwords. I know who is secretly banging who at the office behind their spouse's back. I know who is cybering at work and jerking it in the bathroom daily. At least they tell their sex chat partner they're running off to the bathroom to jerk it. Haven't felt the need to check the validity on that one. I know when people are having marital problems, financial problems, I even know one person here had their children taken away because a social worker found cocaine in their house. I know who's embezzling money. I know when people get fired for completely bullshit reasons, like they just want to replace them with someone younger and nicer on the eyes. I know my, I, I know who my boss is buying Xanax and Vicodins from. Basically, I have a treasure cove of my coworker's secrets. I won't actively do anything with this info, but it's nice knowing I have the ammunition there. Something were ever to happen. You're not, what are you not that's, gonna do anything. With that's you, a right? lot of uh, weight. Dude, where do you work? The mafia? <laughs> the like office. these are the worst people yeah, ever. I don't, dude, I my mean, my boss is fucking buying zannies from the for employees. Real, for real, yeah. Oh my god, that was a lot of things. That was a lot of things. But I guess that, that's probably oh, that's so creepy. That's like, more on the um, people who are just like putting that info out there, knowing yeah, that dude, they signed don't do a that waiver. On your work email, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like on their work computers. Like, yeah. That's on them. Especially if you're handling like the one with about the cocaine. Like, how are you talking about CPS shit on your yeah, work email? <laughs> like right. that seems like a bad move. It's fucking wild. Dude, that's gotta be a wild <laughs> position to be in to just like see all that information and then see those people at work and just be like, You're a piece of shit. You're a piece yeah, of like, shit. You just lost your kids to coke. Yeah. Like, you guys are cheating on each other's right. wives. <laughs> with each other. <laughs> with each other. <laughs> All right, I yeah. once took a shit in the bathtub and then realizing what a horrible mistake I'd made, yeah. I flung poo into a hole in the wall. What? My parents renovated and patched <laughs> up the hole, so now there is a 15-year-old turd in between the bathroom and kitchen wall of my childhood home, not even using a throwaway because I have no shame. <laughs> you got some poop in your walls. Why the fuck would you do, you picked it up? And, why ah. not why not pick it up and put it in the toilet? Yeah. Why I do it in the first place? Yeah, like well, like I'm like yeah, I may okay, maybe you were like in the mo I don't know, whatever. You were like I'm going to try this out and then you didn't even try to like stomp it down or say you just like panicked and were like what have I done? Like instantly uh, <laughs> in the wall is your first choice. Like that's a panic all in one act. Like shit saw it was like oh my I know, god. And the fact, just, ah, the, the fact that he was in a bathroom with a closed door in no rush yeah. to figure out how to deal with this, then, he panically picks it up and throws it in the wall. That's how you know it's a bad idea that he had all the time in the world and still was like I need Died. That's he, it. Sounds like something a drunk person would do, or a right? child, or a child. Yeah. Well, it says his childhood home, oh, so yeah. I'm assuming Dude, he was younger. Could you imagine being the one that has to put in like, like new drywall at some point? Like, it's like well, now it's, it's probably just a, a piece of you know. It's because it's micro bark. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> piece. It's a. Bark. All right. So <laughs> this one is heavy. Oh, okay. God. I right. accidentally killed seven people. Yo. I put a rag into a new water heater exhaust to keep debris out and installed it into a rental. I get a call a week later, there's been an accident. I show up and there's tons of police. They ask me where the gas shut off is and I go to shut off the gas and see the end of the rag that I forgot sticking out the top of the heater. Ripped it off, shut the gas off and head upstairs only to be told all the tenants were dead. I drink all day now and sleep. It's killing me from the inside every day. But if I say anything, my family is ruined. We have a bunch of rental properties and we'd be shut down immediately. That's pretty fucking heavy, dude. Wait, so he actually turned the gas on? No, so he left his rag on top of the water heater. Right. And it caught fire. 
Oh, and burned the and place it burned down. the place down oh, and killed seven gotcha. people. Okay, because he left the rag on the heater. Fuck! I thought I was saying gas because he said he went back in there. He said he ripped the rag out yeah, and shut the gas off. I assume. Well, mm -hmm. I assume it had something to do with the rag because he said he saw the end of the rag sticking out of the top of the heater. Right. And so he pulled, I guess, maybe what was left of it out, shut it off, and then yeah. head upstairs. So yikes! Shit! Somebody's gonna see this and be like, "Wait, hold on a second. I know. <laughs> there was a. Wait, there, I died in that fire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <clears throat> moving on. I hate all of my friends. Literally, I don't have anything in common with any of them, and I don't care, but I'm too scared to be alone and have no one else to go to, so I keep hanging out with them. I thought you didn't care, but you're too scared. Which is it? Do you, are you, do you care so much that you're scared, or do you not care at all? And that makes you scared. Poser? Maybe the fact he doesn't yeah. care makes How about you scared. try to fucking find something in common with your friends? Don't just assume they all gotta have it in common with you. Boom! Uh, how about Roasted. you get a better personality? <laughs> Blame it on your friends. All right, the story I tell is that my first kiss was not, okay, This I think this one is kind of fucked up too. Okay, the story I tell is that my first kiss was nine years ago when I was 14 with my now fiance, that is false. When I was 13, I babysat an eight-year-old boy. His parents were very open and he was very sexually aware. I caught him watching porn a couple times. From the start, he was very aggressive, always grabbing me and trying to kiss me. After a while, oddly impressed with this sort of attention and very curious, one night we started making out. This became oh a routine and went on for almost a year before I realized how horrific my uh, and wrong my actions were. I continued to babysit him for a while, but soon his parents stopped calling me. I've always wondered why. I'm terrified that I'll one day be exposed as a child molester. So as a 13-year-old girl, she made out with an 8-year-old boy. That's pretty gross. Mm. A babysitter. That's like some porn shit. Like, not the 13 and 8-year-old, <laughs> right, but, but like, the babysitter like, thing. Oh, gross, dude. 13 and 8. Wow. There was, there was a thing recently that happened in Aberdeen um, where these two brothers, like, had just like fucked their cousin a bunch of times when they were younger and like basically just like groomed her into thinking that was normal. Oh, that's and then, and then they all forgot about that. And then when they grew up later, they all, she was like realized that that wasn't a cool thing that had happened and then pressed charges on them when she turned 18. But she found out basically when she, you know, was like 13 or something mm -hmm. and then has just been waiting until she was an adult to try them, which is just fucking gnarly Damn. and fucked up. Damn, that's wild. All right. Oh God. <clears throat> I used to masturbate a lot. When I was 10, I had a technique where I let off a load into a sock, then wash it and quickly dry it. Now, I couldn't leave it hanging outside or use a dryer, otherwise my family would have seen it and probably smelt it, whatever. So I'd put it inside my gas heater unit. Unfortunately, my sock had caught on fire inside the unit, blew it up, and set my house on fire. Only my brother was home at the time, and he managed to survive, but the house did not. For five years, we stayed from caravan park to caravan park while we waited for confirmation that it was not arson and we could receive the insurance payout. We eventually did and scraped together money to start rebuilding the house. The house is still being rebuilt to this day and it changes me anytime I have to visit my parents living in a tiny mobile home where my backyard once was. Fuck. So his little cum sock burnt down their house. <laughs> yeah, get better ways of coming, buddy. That's... Mm. <laughs> Come That's in other a, socks. Yeah. That's pretty wild. <laughs> you had a designated sock that's fucking foul. <laughs> <laughs> You'd wash it. Uh, yeah, and then put it on the heater because yeah. he's a shameful twat. <laughs> All right. Just come this in a one, bottle, weirdo. This one says, I have been pr pretending to be colorblind to everyone <laughs> I have ever known. Logan Paul. <laughs> including my own parents since I was in third grade. I'm now 28 years old. I even convinced an optometrist of it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's yeah. not that yeah, like, big, why? I guess, but why? Right. You know, like, I mean, cares? I used to, like, convince people that I was, like, I couldn't have spicy foods or yeah. something. Like, I was allergic to things I wasn't for, like... Right, because you just didn't want to eat them. Yeah, or for, yeah. like, a joke for, like, ten seconds. Or if you didn't like, want to, like, you know, yeah. offend someone who cooked right. you food. Just but be like, oh, to I hold can't. on to that for 28 years... Like, like, how does oh, that shit. affect anybody else? Like, and how have you oh, never been color. caught in something where somebody's, like... Like, nobody's ever brought up colors and you've slipped? <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, that orange thing. And they're like, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wait a minute, I you were going to see that. Oh, I think I got over it. All right. All right, next one. When I was 13, I caught my father in bed with my 15-year-old brother's <laughs> girlfriend. Yikes. I haven't seen her since, but I've been blackmailing my father with it for six years. Yo. Six years? <laughs> How old were you when you found out? 13. He caught his dad when in I, bed. Oh, so he's been blackmailing him since he was 13? And Yo. his father, who was an adult, was in bed with a 15-year-old brother's girlfriend. I mean, shit. 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, because it's like, there's no guarantee that that sick fuck's gonna get, like, punished for that. Yeah. So I was like, he might as well get his come up. It's through the punishment of a creative 13 year old. That's <laughs> fucked, dude. That's, uh, that's its own layer of hell. That's fucked. I mean, Jesus Christ. All right, moving on. Every night when I go to bed, I have a little pillow and assortment of blankets I pretend is the girl I like. She would never like me in real life. In fact, she doesn't. So I just play pretend. It's inherently creepy, but it's what keeps me from being a total wreck all the time. Dad. That's sad, bro. Yeah, I don't even want to make fun of that That's one. sad. Like, that is some sad shit. That's like something where, like, you love someone your whole life and then they die. And then it's like you're just alone, but it's like not Except that. Except you never got Except you love. never got that in, to begin with. Yeah. Well, I mean, Damn. friendly tip, maybe. Move on. Don't hug the pillows and go talk to people. Yeah, move on. Yeah. Like... Damn. Shit, that's rough, man. <clears throat> All right. My dad got rich by associating with a scumbag that is own that is his own construction company. Uh -oh. Scumbag bribes city officials to approve unstable skyscrapers that would collapse with a 4.0 earthquake, and my dad makes all the paperwork discreetly. In exchange, multimillionaire scumbags persuades his other loaded friends to hire my dad as their lawyer. So basically, his dad allows these very, very unsafe skyscrapers to be right. built for millions less than they should be. Oh my god. So if an earthquake ever hit, all those people would just die. Right. And then there's Probably. a huge, gigantic class action lawsuit. Yeah. For... Wild. Oh my gosh. Wild, Dude, wild, Jesus. Wild. There's some fucking... That's kind of, this is like scary. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different stories that people Dude, are just I like, was a changed person after I read yeah, some of these because. Like, this is not really how, like, people are just living with this shit. On, no mm -hmm. wonder people are so fucking mad all the time. Dude, yeah. It's like, Seriously. yeah, I killed seven people and they're just like always in their head. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. All right. Uh, my boyfriend and I met at a brothel where I used to work as a whore. That's like the good story. That's the, right. That's yeah, I know, right? That's, that's the happy like, ending. That's oh like, oh, okay, well. Good for you. Like, whatever. <laughs> I do not have a lot of confidence and I can never ask girls out. I met my current wife by installing a keystroke logger on her computer and intercepting Facebook messages and chats with her friends until I could confirm that she liked me. That way I knew exactly how to approach her. I orchestrated our entire early courtship to my advantage. Courtship. If she knew she would likely divorce me because I delved deep into her personal life and I found out some crazy things about her past. It's like the same thing as the other guy. Right. It's like manipulating a relate. That, there was a lot of these, honestly. Like, oh yeah, I hacked into my, this girl's thing, or I read this girl's stuff, and like, they got her to like me. It's like, it's I wonder how much that actually happens. Well, and just like a lot of people don't even sound like it's like a tech savvy thing. They're just like, yeah, just in installed this keystroke logger, like yeah. just a, this thing that you can just download, yeah. and it was just yeah, just found out every well, dude, minute detail about her life. If you know just a little bit about hacking, you can almost yeah. do anything. Like, it's crazy. And with NordVPN. <laughs> yeah. All right, next one. I am white. And my wife is half black. I fantasize that she's my slave when we have sex. <laughs> Fuck, she thinks dude. I'm the least racist person she's ever known. <laughs> Little does she know my slave cracking penis is showing her. <laughs> Jesus, dude. What a, I'm white, my wife's like, I fantasize that she's oh, my slave. Man. <laughs> dude. He fantasizes too, so it's not even like when they're fucking. It's just like, at, oh no, when, you, when they have sex. Yeah, okay, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Damn. I mean, I, I get, I get the, the the dom thing, the the slave, the dom, the BDSM right. stuff. But, but when like, it's because, <laughs> yeah, she's black. She, like an actual like, slave, not like, a sex slave. Like, come on, man. She's like, hey, what uh, the fuck? hey, honey, do you mind wearing that uh, cotton sweater I bought you <laughs> for dinner tonight? Right. No special reason, I just want to pick it off you later. Alright, this is a TLDR, but it says my half-sister tricked my dad into drinking her piss, inadvertently fixing their relationship. I'm trying I to need the long I'm version. trying to remember what the long ver <laughs> What? I, I'm trying to remember what it was. So it was they were they had a bad relationship and oh that's what it was. They had a bad relationship and then so she started uh, bringing him beer that she would piss in and she'd be like here you go dad I got you a beer and because of that nice gesture the dad and her like started to bond because it was like oh well, well thanks you know uh -huh. I appreciate that and she kept doing it but she never told him that she pissed in it because she hated him and because she kept doing those nice things just bringing him beers it fixed, the it fixed their relationship but oh he doesn't God. know that she was drinking <laughs> piss Drink better beer, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh my Cor's god. Life. That's really funny. Of just yeah. that moment. That's like a classic movie scenario of like, I'll show you, and then like you find out that they have a heart of gold, and you're like, oh no, no, I feel bad. Yeah, right. Oh god. It's like, oh thanks, honey. That was really nice of you. He has another story how I tricked my half daughter to drink, bring me piss every day. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> All right, this is the last one. This one's interesting. Uh, this one says, My cousin died when we were both 17. Uh-oh. There was a recep reception at his house just after the funeral. I went into his room and I stole all the money that was there. <laughs> I took some other valuables that his parents wouldn't realize were gone. Oh, my God. No one knows I did it, and they just assumed he didn't have any money in his room, only loose change. I don't regret it, but I will never admit I did it. Also, my cum box. Then someone replied, Wait, no. no, no, no. Is there a pony in someone it? Someone replied and said, elaborate on this cum box, please. And he says, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a shoe box, or at least once was. Whenever I masturbate, I come into it. I've had it for two or three years now, so it has a fair amount of cum. It smells atrocious. I tried to burn it once. When it lit on fire, it was too damp that it sizzled and didn't manage to actually light up. Turns out that burning cum smells awful, so I had to spray it with a deodorant body spray just to get the old smell away. It also has some drenched paper stuck to it. Meow! What is the allure to gathering your own cum? So then this thread continues, and at the very end he just says, I will never be rid of my need for it, and I hate and I love this box just as I hate and love myself. Oh, so he's the cum box. Yeah. <laughs> it's a metaphor. He has become one with the cum. Mm, so the cum inside of the box is like the demons in him for stealing his dead cousin's stuff. Pretty much. And so he must endlessly come in a box <laughs> until he recognizes his own hubris. <laughs> Pretty much. So yeah, that's uh, <laughs> crazy secrets. God fucking Christ. So yeah. just when you look at people, just re remember they're probably hiding a deep fucking secret right. and they got a body in their back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. I'm fucking Jesus. This is oh, wild, man. Man. And well, speaking of, you're wearing a fucking serial killer shirt too. Am I? Oh shit. Yeah. I guess I am. Lady killer. Oh, all right, guys. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. Links, uh, description, yeah. socials. Secrets. Uh, secrets. Yeah, try not to be awful. Secrets are no fun, as they say. Secrets. One time in seventh grade, I killed a man like nobody went to the No one knows to this day. <laughs> Later. I'm fucking Jesus.